paperwork with you. So mm-hmm. he showed me his paperwork. I see it in black and white. She's showing me the places he's been to, and I'm like, yo, I need to play that game. Like, what is that? Like, how do I get there? And he was just like, listen, one of the first things you got to stop doing is, like, stop trading your time for money. Start learning to make your money work for you. Mm -hmm. Start being an investor. Start giving value to people. And I was like, the hell? Like, what you, like, I've never been taught nothing Mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And then he tells me, wealthy people invest in stocks, they start a business, and then they buy real estate. Mm -hmm. You do those three things, your life will change. Mm -hmm. So the rest of my 10 years, I dedicated myself to like, yo, I just got to learn how to play it. And so I just dedicated myself to it, watching CNBC. I'm talking about, I got to watch this before dudes watch the Young and the Restless and the pen Mm because they love the Young and the Restless and Mm -hmm. Price is Right. So I got to watch this before that. Started dedicating myself to reading. And I was like, damn, like this this shit different. I see a bunch of white men making a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. Like, why have I never been taught this? Like, why we never taught this? Mm -hmm. And just coming back home from prison, uh, Mike Tyson said the best, man. Everybody got a plan until they get punched Pushed in the, the face. face. Right? So I got back home. I got this idea. I see it. But how do I get money? Mm-hmm. Like, I get back in the streets. That's what I know how to do. My grandma went to the feds. My mom like, this is what I know how to do. They're, this is my environment. Mm-hmm. No matter what I know, I got to get money. So I get back in the streets, man. And just in that whole process i'm like all right cool this is what it is my mind i'm gonna just use my hustle money to invest in the stock market like this how i'm thinking it's gonna work kind of didn't go that way i catch another charge uh the fed uh the narcs kicked my doing 10 pounds of weed ten thousand dollars um i was facing another 35 years that cost me sixty thousand dollars so everything that i had invest i mean it worked for in the streets i had done lost it again mm-hmm. so uh man just god came to me one day and he was like man you playing the wrong game like and it just I had an epiphany, so I was like, all right, cool. So I still didn't get it, though, because I got back in the streets, but this time I couldn't hustle, so I started robbing, you know, hustlers. Like, that's the next best thing for me in my mind. Like, the streets is what I know how to do. Um, and then I just, like, all right, let me do something then. So I just started reading it again. I always was a smart dude. So I'm like, all right, let me just try it then. So I started really getting into it. Like, all right, yo, this shit makes sense. Like, damn, I see why they don't teach us this. This shit powerful. Like, 70% of everything that we use and consume with our money is on the stock market. Mm-hmm. Like, everything. So I'm like, damn, like, all right, cool. All right, it makes sense to me now. Like, even the brands that we wear, Louis Vuitton, mm-hmm. LVMH, third richest man in the world. Louis Vuitton owes Louis Vuitton. They own Dior. Mm-hmm. They own um, Hennessy, Hennessy mm-hmm. Moet. Yeah. Like, yo, like, let's own it. And oftentimes, the stock is cheaper than the product. Mm-hmm. Gucci, Balenciaga, um, these other brands, like, they own us. I'm like, all right, cool. So I went to tell my homies, like, yo, check this out. Instead of us just blowing the money, we're going to wear the Fendi anyway. We're going to wear it anyway. Let's just own that shit, too. Like, let's let's play the game both ways. So my homies really wasn't getting it. So I had to say, all right, yo, like, the education, the, the knowledge is the fertilizer to your wealth, right? So as the as the education and as the knowledge changes, so does the conversation change. Because now I can have conversations about different things. So I really just locked in on it. And I started teaching my homies. And I was like, all right, look, how do I make it realistic to them? How do I make them tap into it? Mm-hmm. So the second thing was like, yo, check this out. We all, none of us can beat the game. Mm-hmm. Everybody I knew had the same problem. Nobody had a solution. How do I now start looking like, stop looking like the problem and start representing a solution? Right, so I can't talk to everybody, but I can talk to street dudes. Like, I can talk to them. So I'm like, yo, check this out. If you go do a bid, which is gonna happen, what do you come home to? Mm-hmm. Like, you gotta get back in the streets. You gotta get it out the mud again. So if you had money invested for you, when you come home, you got money. You don't gotta ask nobody for no handout. What if you go do a bid and what you've made the sacrifices, you've took the chances, what do your family have? Like, so let's start thinking bigger picture now. What happens if you get killed in the street? Because most of us either go to jail or we get killed. What do you leave your kids? Like, let's start making it make sense. So the goal for me was to never tell you get out the streets. It was to start saying, yo, let's start thinking about our family now. Like, let's start thinking about something bigger than us. And nobody never came to us like that. So that was my whole avenue. And so the Wall Street trap was me just saying, let me turn the trap word into something positive mm-hmm. instead of always being about dope, instead of always being about hustling. And I knew my voice for who I was talking to. I never wanted to talk to nobody else. Wow, so you didn't go to school or nothing. You just read 
Nah, Material? I just read. I just read. What were some of the books you read? Uh, so I know a lot. The first thing I read was Rich Dad Poor Dad. Great, mm-hmm. read, right? great read. Um, and the reason why was because it wasn't actually an investment book. It was a mindset shift. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that have to happen to us in the street is we got to start looking at money different, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of times with me, what happened with me was I stopped looking at money as something I needed, and I started saying, "Yo, what I really want is the time," mm-hmm. right? Because most people, most people, the biggest complaint you'll have is, "I don't have enough time." Mm-hmm. So my thing was, yo, let me start using the money to buy back more of my time. The more time I have, I can find a way to create more money. Mm. If I can create more money, I can buy more time. And then ultimately, I had the freedom that I want. See, we think we got freedom right now, but we don't really have it. Right? You don't have freedom until you're able to do the things you want to do, spend time with the people you want to do. Even if you don't want to do shit, you got the freedom to say, I don't want to do shit. Mm-hmm. Right? So I was like, I need to do that. So I just started learning how to analyze businesses. Anything by Warren Buffett. Anything by Peter Lynch. Any like I started reading them books. Don't get me wrong, it's boring as shit, right? But I started understanding like, okay, if they can do it, I damn sure can do it. Mm-hmm. Like they ain't no better than me. They men like me. The only difference was they had access to knowledge. Remember, at one time it was like illegal for us to read. That's right. Right? It's illegal for us to read. It's the reason why it's illegal for us to read. Because once you start reading, you get exposed to something different. If I get exposed to something different, I can start seeing the world different. Right. If I can start seeing the world different, now I can have what's called time, uh, financial identity, financial um, understanding. I can start saying, yo, this is what my mind, money is worth. Mm-hmm. This is what my money can do for me. I ain't never know that. Only thing I knew was I can work for money, and that's it. Mm-hmm. If that's the only way I know how to make money, I'm limiting myself. That's right. I'm limiting myself. Yeah. Right? So Wall Street is this big old machine that prints money every day, all day. I just got to know how to operate the machine. If I learn how to operate the machine, I got a job forever. And a job is just to produce freedom for myself. Mm. And then let my daughter not start inheriting freedom. So my daughter, five years old now, she got six figures invested. I've been investing since she was one. Like, let's normalize Same. that. All right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's normalize. All right, Stan, you want to go to college? Cool. You ain't got to go in debt to go. Because I've been investing for you since you was two. You'll be a millionaire before you're 15. That's the goal. Mm. To give her freedom. Not just not just money, but give her freedom. Mm. To say, okay, how many 15-year-olds we know, man, I, you can't do this because you got to help mama raise the kids. Mm-hmm. Or you got to get this job mm-hmm. to help mama pay bills, right? But what if... Like, yo, you can be a sick, you can go to college and have that experience if you want to go. But if not, you can be an investor, right? Most of the people we know is if I can't play ball or I can't rap, yo, I'm going to just be a hustler. Because everybody who I see go to work, nothing against nobody going to work, but everybody who I knew that went to work was struggling. Mm -hmm. I don't want to struggle, man. I don't want normalized struggling. How do I do that? I start learning how to be an investor. Mm -hmm. That shit unlock all the doors you need to unlock. You know I think it's great, especially for your daughter, that you started a bank account. They've done studies that show that when kids have a bank account at an early age, they tend to be way better with money later on in life. And that's something that people need to focus on, like explaining to your kids how money works, mm-hmm. making sure that they know they have a bank account. And I think even with so many apps and technology today, it does make it a lot more accessible for people, especially younger people. Now, nah, that's a fact. So I'm, a, I'm a, like, so for me, my daughter doesn't even have a bank account. She got what's called a custodial account, but that's smart, ye. Here's why. You put your money in a bank, the bank then takes your money. So let's look at it like this. Mm -hmm. You put $1,000 in the bank. The bank, once you open that bank account, the bank can say, yo, we legally can take 90% of that money and do what we want to do with it, fractional reserve banking, Mm -hmm. right? And you don't know, you're like, all right, cool, but they've taught us, yo, let's just sit. The bank is the safest place to put your money. They've taught us that, Mm -hmm. right? They've taught us that, right? And we don't know no better, right? Because we going off the information we've been taught. So the bank going to say, okay, Trap, let me take that 1000 Charlemagne needs 1000 Charlemagne, we can give you $900 at this. I call it your adult report cost, so your credit score, whatever that is. We'll give you that based on this. You pay me interest on that. He takes that 900 He does what he does. He go pay it to you, Envy. You take the 900 You put it in the bank. The bank now take that same 900 They take 800 lend it to somebody else. Right, so they're gonna make a whole lot of money off that. Mm-hmm. If so they can't, ten percent off ten percent interest, and they only give you one percent. I'm about to say that off yours, but then they can also say, "Yo, you know what? Since nobody don't want to take this money, we don't got nobody to give it to. Let's go put it in the stock market." Mm-hmm. Right. So now we we asked out, and they're gonna give you fifty cent at the end of the year. Right. So the, how do we leverage it? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Let me now say 
I'm going to put my own money in the stock market, right? And I'm going to own the same bank. I'm going to own Chase Bank, right? I'm going to get Chase Bank to pay me dividends. I'm going to get those dividends to buy me more stock in Chase Bank, right? So now I've not only got the bank to pay me, I've also got ownership in the bank. I've turned the bank into my own trap house. Right, that's mm-hmm. just how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Like for me, so for my daughter, it's the same thing. If I put, if I just keep putting money in the bank for her, it'll never grow to that million that I wanted to grow to, right? Because they ain't gonna pay me enough. Mm-hmm. But if I put it in stocks and give her ownership, and then from five to eighteen when she has access to it, it's unlimited what it could do. Now, let me ask you 